question is, why were the Pythagoreans so interested in the golden ratio, the golden section? I have every book, every published, about the golden ratio, the golden section. Mark Livio's book, Geometry of Art and Life, The Divine Proportion. Uh, another book with the same title, The Divine Proportion. Why were the Pythagoreans so interested in the golden section? They are interested, obviously, in a complete grand unification of physics and metaphysics. We have two antinomies today that are dueling for the truth. We have nihilism or materialism, and of course we have the idiot creationist. One thinks that there is a uh, being that sits up in the sky, and the other thinks that everything is simply a materialistic reduction of energy and particles and whatnot. The Pythagoreans unified physics and metaphysics, and believe it or not, the grand unified theory, which all modern scientists today believe is a divinely simplex equation, was as rediscovered by me back in 2005, a very simplex equation. Now, as was proven in Plato's Republic 509d, that the divided line of Plato is phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which altogether is phi, what does this have to do with the Pythagorean pentagram? Of course, we all know that this was the symbol of the incommensurability and unification of physics and metaphysics of the Pythagoreans. So what does this 108, 36, 36 isosceles triangle have to do with a grand unification of everything? As Plato and Plotinus and Pythagoras said that everything is numbers, not literally in the materialistic sense, but we can deduce things about metaphysics and ontology from numbers. Therefore, we were able to see things existentially and able to work back and deduce things about the absolute, about the soul, about the noetic cosmos. The Pythagoreans were not interested in the golden section, as every book about there, out there about the golden section is. It's just a bunch of pretty picture books about the plant phyllotaxis, and usually it is a uh, nautilus shell, and that fabulous spirals is found in nature and life, and of course you'll see the self-made tapestry and uh, the various books written by Philip Ball. All this is great and as beautiful as wonderful. We're able to see uh, symmetry, like the vertical versus the horizontal, the spiral of DNA. All this, of course, is in a ratio of 1 to 5. The Pythagoreans, the Platonists, the Neoplatonists were not interested in the existential beauty of the Fibonacci sequence, i.e. the golden ratio, or dividing a uh, Plato's divided line in the extreme and mean ratio. They were not interested in the existential nature of the golden section. They were interested in using that to deduce what the one is, both in principle and attribute, and say things about the ontological structure, mechanics, the clockworks of our cosmos. This, of course, is the basis of the isosceles triangle, the 108 36 36 triangle, as found in the pentagram. You'll see it's the exact same triple triangle that embodies Plato's Republic 509D, but of course it does not belong to Plato. This came from the Pythagoreans. We only attribute it to Plato because there's the oldest existing source that we have in written form attributed to Plato in his Republic, which is mirrored in the cave analogy and the sun analogy also in Republic. So what is this reducibly? Is there a grand unified theory for everything, both the cosmos the mythos and the cosmos the titos, both everything empirical and everything ontological, everything metaphysical, that the Pythagoreans have a simplex equation for this. Yes, as I discovered back in 2005, Plato's divided line, once again, is divided by phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which, if taken all together, remember both of these are 1. We have sloping angles of 1 and 1 with a base of phi. Phi reducible once again to phi 1, 1 over phi. All of this together, phi 1, 1 over phi of Plato's divided line is a simplex equation. This is the equation, the grand unified theory of everything according to the Pythagoreans, both visible and metaphysical, is 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. This is literally the grand unified theory according to the Pythagoreans as I rediscovered in 2005. And this of course is a mathematical proof and this is of course Plato's little secret in his Republic and mentioned elsewhere and actually speculated upon by 
Plotinus, Numenius, and all the ancient uh, Neopythagoreans and the Neoplatonists over time, but you will not find any mention anywhere until I rediscovered in 2005 what the grand unified theory of the Pythagoreans were. Is 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, and everything taken in totality, which equals phi cubed. Phi cubed, of course, being 4.23606, etc., etc. Uh, phi to the power of negative 3 is 0 0.23606, etc., etc. 1 divided by phi to the power of negative 3 is the grand unified theory of the Pythagoreans. This is not speculation. This is not uh, conjecture. This is the proof, the mathematical proof, that amazingly enough, now that we've had nearly 2,000 years to look at Plato's divided line, it was only recently proven, a few years ago, with absolute mathematical certainty, that Plato's divided line is divided in the extreme mean ratio of phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which is the basis and the formation of the Pythagorean isosceles triangle, sloping angles of 1 and 1, base angles of 108, 36, and 36. This is the special isosceles triangle of the Pythagoreans with a vertical of oops, 1 over 5. Why does it occur here as opposed to directly at the midpoint? Because it has to intersect at the midpoint between 1 and 1 as a mathematical logical necessity, or as the Platonists would call it, anarchy. It intersects at 1 over 1. So, what is the grand unified theory? of the uh, Pythagoreans, that we've actually been looking for the unification of the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and of magnetism. Today we call it the GUT, or the quest for the grand unified theory. Well, amazing enough, the Pythagoreans discovered it many thousands of years ago, and who knows who they got it from before then. We obviously have no rec written record, nor have a lot of conjecture about where it came from earlier than Pythagoras. But, the grand unified theory, the quote-unquote supremely divine equation, of the Pythagoreans is 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, which forms the basis of the special Pythagorean isosceles triangle, which forms the basis of Plato's Republic 509D, 511, the divided line, which subdivides up into phi, 1, 1, 1 over phi, with sloping angle of 1 over phi, which forms the basis of the isosceles triangle, with sloping angles of 1, 1, and base of phi, it is amazing that this simplex equation, of which I have nearly about 250 pages of elaborations, proofs, detail upon detail upon detail, is why the Pythagoreans were so interested in the geometry and using it as a deductive metaphysical tool for understanding the mechanics of the universe. This proves, not in this short little pathetic video, but it proves that the EDC that we debate over today versus the creationists and the materialists, the actual quote-unquote religion, but basically the metaphysics or the ontology of Pythagoreanism, Platonism, and Neoplatonism, which denied, by the way, outright in any translation, that the absolute was being, i.e. God, is diametrically opposed to the idiocy of creationism, a la Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and the idiocy, the stupidity of pathetic materialism. It's unfortunately accurate and sad and true at the same time that the creationists have it half right and half wrong, and the materialists, the atomists, have it half right and half wrong. The materialists have it right that there's no God, there's no old guy sitting up in the clouds, and that uh, everything uh, existential, of course, is a, a bundle of wave fronts and atoms and so on and so forth, and that our uh, universe, existentially and empirically so, is reducible to wave fronts, atoms, when it. It is also true and sad that the creationists have it right, that there is a metaphysics and ontology, a ratio, an actual uh, soul that underlies the substrate of this empirical existence. But they are wrong, of course, that the basis for that is a proof of a god, a creator being. The uh, Platonists and the Pythagoreans deny that the absolute was being. Their simplex equation for describing the entire cosmos has proven by my discovery in 2005, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, is simply this. The conservation of the logic, the mechanics of emanationism, 
which is the basis of everything that Plato, Plotinus, and Pythagoras taught, is one simple thing. Remember the sloping angles of the isosceles triangle? One and one. What the absolute is and what it quote-unquote does cannot be differentiated. There is no argument for uh, the complexity and the, the divinity as found in nature, both in macrocosmic and microcosmic world. The only contention is the source, the locus, of the complexity and the beauty that we see in nature, the harmonies, the rhythms, the Fibonacci sequence that we see both the macro and the macrocosmic world. Now, the idiot the creationists think that the, of course, the divine ratio that we see in the existential world is proof of God, and of course that is a lunacy, is a fallacy, is an inverse fallacy of identification that as above, so below, therefore, as below, therefore above. In other words, the being that we have here below is a reflection of the being that is above. Of course, that is idiocy. A uh, great book to buy on uh, proof against this, of course, is Philip Ball's book called The Self-Made Tapestry. The complexity that we see in nature and proof of the Pythagorean metaphysics and the fact of emanationism and the simplex conservation of the mechanics of monism and platonic emanationism, or prodos, is simply that the, what the absolute is and what it does cannot be differentiated. This is the absolute, the one, and what it does, quote-unquote, for lack of a better term, 5 to the power of negative 3, what the absolute is and what it does cannot be differentiated. What does this mean? In other words, there is nothing in this world or nothing that underlies the substrate to this world in metaphysics or existentialism which does not have at least one attribute. What the absolute is and what it does is and what it does are not differentiated. What the one is and what it does are the same thing. What light is and what it does are one and the same thing, light and illumination. One does not differentiate light from what it does, that illumination, or does one differentiate illumination from light? Um, this is, unfortunately, a very short video that requires many hundreds of pages of discussions, and I cannot jam it all into a tiny little video, but basically, once again, the Pythagorean pentagram, taking it out of the hands of the uh, unintelligent pagans, and I'm sure they're going to hate me saying that, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the pagans and the, the, the other lesser people, taking the pentagram to the original source of the Pythagoreans, forming the basis of Plato's divided line phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, Plato's divided line, we have the equation for the totality of everything in the cosmos, the cosmos de mitos and the cosmos de titos, according to the Pythagoreans, phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which is simply, altogether, of course, phi, summed up in the simplex equation of 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. And of course, I'll not be proven true in my lifetime, but the math is correct. But this literally is the grand unified theory for everything as found out by the Pythagoreans, and who knows before them, thousands of years ago. This is literally the grand unified theory of physics and metaphysics, according to Pythagoras. Uh, as Pythagoras said, everything is numbers. Well, this was the number of uh, Pythagoras. This was the harmony, the special quote-unquote secret of uh, Plato, the secret that's hidden in uh, both Plato's cave analogy, uh, the secret that was hidden in Plato's uh, divided line of Republic 590 to 511, Plato's sun analogy. Uh, it was also talked about by Plotinus. I've only uncovered this once again in 2005. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, I don't have enough time or nor do you probably have the patience for me to go into all the details about this. Hopefully you'll discover further nice and future videos about this, and specifically about the Pythagorean pentagram and why this formed the symbol, the basis of all Pythagoreanism, because within it is the entire encapsulation of the physics, the metaphysics, and the mechanics of everything that the Pythagoreans believed, taught, and found to be true, both about the metaphysics, the ontology, and the existential world, and was the complete uh, logical proof of everything, as opposed to creationism and also as opposed to materialism. Thank you for your time, and uh, next video we'll be talking about the pentagram of the Pythagoreans.